it's proven. I mean, the, it, the reality is, unfortunately, a lot of our friends, a lot of our uh, associates in this industry, they also mimic too, mimic too much drug game stuff. And then drug game is the same way. Crew can be okay, but somebody at the top is jealous or nervous and somebody's coming for his slot and trying to hold little man down. Now you don't held him down so much that now he resents you. And now you have made another enemy. Music industry, we copy too much of that in, in the long run, but I've studied the Rothschilds. I've studied others, and I and I've seen why some com- some families are still around and still have a, a, an amount of power that they wield, and some are gone. The Roth the Rothschilds' secret was their family bank that they created. Everybody got a life insurance policy. Everybody was connected to everybody's life and death, so everybody was in the business of building the Rothschild name brand family. Other families got their money was blowing through it. Last generation died off. There was no legacy. It was nothing because every man was for himself and everybody was trying to get daddy's favor so they could get the most of the inheritance so they could blow through it. Like, I think that there's always going to be people that can see a bigger picture and a longer game. And there's always going to be people that just see the short game and what's in it for them and the, and the immediacy of it. And, and that's kind of what has always separated just even us as black people. Nah, you're absolutely right. You know something, Blue, what I did should have did at the top of this conversation? You mentioned Outkast. But mm-hmm. for anybody who's not familiar with your name and your background, just give them a quick rundown. This ain't showing off, but give them a quick rundown <laughs> of all of the artists that you manage. All the artists I manage? Um, I mean, I know we can't oh. go through. I mean, Let's go with the big ones, the, the, the Nick Cannons. I, I'll oh. let you tell it. So... I, I actually was, I'm working on a book on management. And so in doing it, I needed to put a list together. So one day on a plane, I just put a list of everybody I worked with. Um, and it wasn't really any particular order. It was just kind of, um, so my name is Michael Blue Williams, born and raised in the Bronx, New York. Um, I stumbled into this music industry in 1992 or 1991 um, with a group called Jodeci. Um, started as Jodeci's roadie. I was the bottom. I, I did everything. I went to Waffle House at two in the morning. I loaded, unloaded the bus. I just, it was a job. I just wanted to be out there and get the experience and kind of learn. Um, I went from Jodeci's roadie to Jodeci's bodyguard. Uh, went from Jodeci's bodyguard to Mary J. Blige bodyguard, from Mary J. Blige to SWV, SWV to Shy. Um, just kind of kept growing as this bodyguard slash road manager. And in 1994, yeah, nine, in 1994, Shaquem Compare, who manages Queen Latifah, um, had gotten to know me from the road and playing ball at Hollywood Y and stuff like that. And he basically, um, I offered, I was going to help him get the group Shy for management. Shy was looking for new management. Um, and Shy was like, yo, if you get me the group, I'm basically going to give you a job. You can come work. So I got Shy and, and Shaquem to meet. Shy signed the flavor unit for management. Shaquem gave me a job um, as a manager. I'm thinking, oh, cool. I'm about to get shy and I'm going to start right here at the top and do what I got to do. Um, but Shaquem actually gave shy to this girl, Mandy, that had been working at Flavian, who had, he felt had more experience. And he gave me the Fushnickens and Nonchalant. And those were my first two artists that I managed. Um, and then over the next Three, four years, I eventually became president of Flav Unit. Um, then I left Flav Unit and started Family Tree. And so in the combination of being at Flav Unit and Family Tree, I have managed Outkast, Monica, Faith Evans, SWV, Donnell Jones, the Fushnickens, Nonchalant, Raphael Sadiq, Life Jennings, Case, Donnell Jones, Eric Renee, Big Sean, Cody Simpson, CeeLo Green, KC and JoJo, Nas, Jagged Edge, Nick Cannon, Macy Gray, Youngbloods, Nicole Ray, Major, Molly Music, Genuine, TGT, Trina, Shanice, Keith Murray, Young Buck, Sunshine Anderson, Ro James, and Gina Thompson. <laughs> talk that talk, Blue. <laughs> talk that. That's a mic drop moment right there. Like, like that's a, Damn. And, That's and when I say manage for your behind, yes, name on the back of the album, plaques to go with it. Yes, those are the managers. Like when it was management, when we had to sell records. 
But you know what's the best part of that story? Like real talk. I know. I know you have mentioned some of the most legendary artists uh, to ever touch a microphone. But the most, the best part of that story is, you 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 started out in one of the most humble places in the industry. You you was a roadie. You 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 were straight for anybody who don't know what a roadie is. A roadie <laughs> does the grunt work. You do all the stuff that nobody else, nobody else, else wants to do. do. Everybody everybody's your boss when you're a roadie. The, the security tells you what to do. Road manager tells you what to do. The, the principals tell you what to do. Shit, the bus driver might tell you what to do. Just because you out there, I'm, I don't know who I'm supposed to listen to, so I'm listening to everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> And you just do it. You, know, you, you get up. No, nah, I, I think it's great because here's half of the problem with, and you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to pile on. Everybody always talk about social media. Social media has a lot of positives, but it also has a lot of negative. A lot effects. of negatives, yeah. What, what, one of the greatest negative effects that social media have is that it shows people today. It shows where they are in this moment. It shows them in the big house. It shows them spending money. It shows them first class flights. It shows them at, 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 at the, the, the five star restaurants, five star hotels. What it doesn't show is the grind. It don't show the hustle. It don't show the setbacks. It don't show, yo, I'm ready to throw my hands up because I've been trying everything that I can and I just can't get nothing to click. So it shows a person like yourself not realizing I've been doing this since 92. Like, like, like that's, that's a legitimate 30 years of grind. Do you have that in you? Do you have the commitment to, to say, I want to do something and stick with it for 30 years. And most people can't do, do you have what it takes to stick with it for five years <laughs> till you get a break? Good for you, man. Good for you. Thank um, you, man. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.